society back to a blank state. What, what it says is that by introducing terror um, on a widespread basis mm -hmm. in society, it basically reverts to a tabula rosa or a blank state where exterior control can be put onto the, the population. That, to me, sounds remarkably similar to order out of chaos, which you probably know is the Freemasonic. So you think, you see, would you describe the people who run the Tavistock Institute as like academic elites? Is that yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And they yeah. thought that, that they should basically be controlling the plebs. For, yeah, for the, for the, and, and the, for the, the benefit of society. The plebs need to be, you know, dumbed down and, and made sure that, they, that they're basically controlled. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so uh, they, did they, would you say that the Tavistock Institute... Um, had kind of a superiority, felt that they were superior to ordinary people. Then. Absolutely, absolutely. This is entirely what it's about. It's about entraining um, people in authority, training, in training world leaders. They, um, so they were involved in actually training up-and-coming leaders yeah. in psychological techniques Absolutely, as well. and applying psychological techniques to society. I mean, essentially, it is using fear to shock people into submission um, mm -hmm. and desensitize them and destabilize them. Uh, I mean, Eric Christ, who was the chairman of the Tavistock Institute in 1963, uh, described their work as creating social turbulence. Uh, basically, he said that this will desensitise and destabilise the society, it will lower its ability to critically analyse, and it will mean that uh, basically anybody or whoever should wish to could impose their world view on the society. Mm -hmm. um, he said in 1963 that the world was already, he proudly stated that, that thanks to Tavistock the world was already in a state of permanent social turbulence. Right, and, that, and, you, and you contend that they deliberately keep it like that in order to best control the people. Absolutely, I mean if, you, if you're fearful all the time, if you're on edge, you, you react um, I mean, even from a psychological process, you get into that fight or flight um, sort of area, and so you don't have the chance to rationally go over things and critically analyse and deal with things. Basically, if you're terrified, you'll take any help and any advice that will be given. And, you know, the people that are often giving the advice are people in authority who possibly don't have your best interests at heart. And we were discussing earlier um, the Cold War, Mm. You know the the, the the communist threat, that, mm. which seems to which went away in the early nineties, and wow. now we've got the Arab threat. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, and you think they're orchestrated purely to, for the same reason to, I, to increase I, fear, to so people are controlled? Or I think I think it's sort of broad stereotypes. You know, it's easily understandable enemies. People that basically anybody can say yes, this is something that I can understand. I think that is is um, very, very, very sort of important to them. You, you can't be questioning yourself. You've got to have yourself as the sort of defined norm and anyone else defined as an other, an other which can be looked upon with um, cynicism, essentially, mm -hmm. you know, to be uh, treated with suspicion. All right, then. Well, let's, let's come on to psychotronics. Okay. Now, that's quite a long word. Can mm. you explain what that means? Well, psychotronics is essentially um, electronic means of um, hypnotizing. You know, we've got George Esther Brooks using hypnotism, we've got Ewan Cameron using psychic driving, we've got people in Tavistock like William Sargent who are basically using exactly the same techniques as Ewan Cameron at the same time. So you're saying using electronics? But well, these are, these are sort of norm the, these are the previous methods. Right. Basically in the 60s the CIA seemed to move away from drugs into psychotronics, electronic means, and um, things like um, synthetic te telepathy, uh, you know, putting emotional states into people's heads, um, making, making people feel things, making people see and hear things that aren't there, mm -hmm. using electronic means, using sub-oral devices, electromagnetic waves. Right, so when you say using electronic devices, let's mm. just go, let's just dr drill down into that. A physical device, like essentially like a ray gun or something like mm -hmm. that that one could shoot at, a, at somebody. And that would be a microwave? It, it could be a microwave, it could be ELF, it could be... Extra low frequency radio waves. Yeah, yeah, I mean... I'm so, different types of electromagnetic waves, yeah, basically. Yeah. But what about um, implants? Well, obviously, implants are there as well. I mean, there's, 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 there's a broad range. You've got people like Michael Persinger um, and uh, Igor Smirnoff, and they are dealing with subliminal and suboral, sort of putting emotions into people's heads. If you see a puppy being kicked, say, like basically you're taking that stimuli and your brain will interpret that into electric, electronic signals uh -huh. and you will feel emotion. Yes. And what they did essentially was bypass that visual stimuli. Right. They're, they're making your brain um, respond to something and then you get the physical emotive response. 
as far as implants go, the, the, the person who, who really was into implants was Jose Delgado. Now, a lot of people will have seen Jose Delgado and not realized it. It's the experiment where he had a bull in a bull ring, and by remote control means, he stopped it charging at him mid-charge. Right. Jose Delgado basically felt that, that human free will was bad for, for democracy. So you had an implant in the bull's head? Yeah, these are called steinoceivers, and basically what these do, they will go directly into the brain, and they can be controlled by remote, controlled by computer m mechanisms. And, and would, that be, would that device be preventing the bull's muscles from working, or would it be inducing fear, or how, why would the bull stop in that well, case? I have a quote here. Basically, Delgado stated, um, it's already possible to induce a large variety of responses from motor effects to emotional responses and intellectual manifestations by direct electrical stimulation. Mm -hmm. The individual is defenseless against direct manipulation of the brain because it is derived in his most intimate mechanisms of biological reactivity. Electrical stimulation of appropriate intensity always prevails over free will. For example, stimulation of the motor cortex will cause flexion of the hand that cannot voluntarily be avoided. Destruction of the frontal lobes produces uh, changes in effectiveness which are beyond personal control. Right. Uh, I mean, he had some very strange ideas. Mm -hmm. He felt that perhaps um, organized slave societies were happier than normal, you know, modern day mm -hmm. societies because they took away that agony of decision, which right. was good of him. Really? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> It's amazing. I mean, so, so, but would you not need a whole load of implants in your, if you wanted to create all of these different effects? I mean, well, you know what I mean? You, the, the because these different, different electrical the brain, signals. So I, I, I suppose so, but I mean, I really wouldn't know. I mean, there, there, there's many, many people that have been found with these implants in them. I mean, Robert Naisland is, is one particular researcher, I believe he's in Switzerland or Sweden, I forget. But um, he's had it ver uh, independently verified that he's got lots and lots of foreign objects in his brain. Uh, and you would say they were put there by the CIA? He, well, I, I think he, they were actually put there by, the, the, by his own country's uh, secret police. Now, what year are we talking about with this bull experiment and, and, and the court that you came out with there? Um, that was 1965, so obviously, you know, the technology's um, gone on a little bit by there. But, but still, this is, this is years ago, and this is what they're telling the public. Yeah. If you can just imagine what they're not telling the public, and yeah. they've got 50 years on us. Uh -huh. It's incredible. And so, okay... Uh, an electronic device inside your brain that would be controlled remotely then or yes yes remotely but i, I mean was this guy did he have wires attached or, or no no not at all this can this can be um, controlled through sort of um, electromagnetic waves right. so much in the same way i assume that satellite television can be picked yeah. up you know it's a it's a receiver and a transmitter and you know like your remote control from yeah the TV. Ex exactly and it can be affected like that. like that right but you, you may not even need that i mean um you know mm -hmm. lieutenant commander thomas norrup was uh, addressing a Navy psychological um, NATO conference um, on dimensions of stress and anxiety in Norway, and he accidentally let slip to the uh, journalists there that mm -hmm. basically the Navy had been involved in creating mind-controlled assassins using uh, Ludovico technique, which is um, like in Clockwork Orange, where he's got his eyes um, right. held open, and he's basically, he said it took about four to six weeks they could completely change this person's character, make them a completely cold psychological killer, a robotic killer. Mm -hmm. When people suggested that perhaps he was speaking out of turn or wasn't really, you know, the, the, it, was, it was confirmed by another psychiatrist mm -hmm. called uh, Dr. Erwin Sarenson. Mm -hmm. And he, he um, confirmed that basically the Navy had approached him and he'd carried out these experimentations many, many times. Mm -hmm. So let's say the, the person doesn't have an implant and mm -hmm. they want to use psychotronics yes. using microwave and... It's normally 